Teaching the Springs Way is all about putting students into the driver's seat, empowering them to make informed decisions about their goals, their learning, how they learn, and the progress they're making. Teaching the Springs Way creates a lifelong learner. What I mean is that when teachers are teaching the Springs Way, their primary focus is on developing independent learners who are invested in their own learning experience. It also means that knowing each child holistically and forging a relationship comes first. In order to do this for every child, our teachers must have inclusive practices where every student gets what they need and is celebrated. This is the foundation for personalized learning, which is the cornerstone of Teaching the Springs Way. Our Teaching the Springs Way process includes strategies that teach students to think, reflect, and actually own their learning journey. This starts with goal setting. Student outcomes are important, but the process of learning is equally important. It's not as simple as just getting the kids to learn the outcomes. For that, the sit and get style of education can work for the short term. We are looking for lasting results that students internalize and can apply in school and beyond. The Springs Classroom is designed to be student-driven and interest-focused. So it's with a prepared environment, choice of activities, and an intentional caring community. So we'll have strong teacher and student relationships. That's absolutely a must. There are many possible schedules for a personalized classroom, but in my ideal, each day the children would review their mastery path, their work map, or their progress folder to decide what targeted lessons they're going to do that day. The child will set daily goals for their individualized work time. Maybe they will jot this down in their progress folder or in their work journal or even on an erasable sentence strip on their desk. Then they choose an activity to work on that helps them to reach their goal. This might be a hands-on game, textbook work, a video, partner activity, an online lesson or, or whatever. Once they're done, they check their own work for immediate feedback. This process needs to be taught just like all the others. Maybe they can check the work by flipping over the puzzle or for some things, maybe the teacher ace would need to check before they move on. Or maybe they go to the scoring station that the teachers created to look at the answer key and mark their work. They can correct their wrong answers and then record their progress in their progress folder or composition book. If the score is below a certain level, they would get help from the ACE or teacher or sign up for a lesson once the teacher is available. In this way, the student is in the driver's seat making decisions about the work and his or her needs. The progress folders or work journals are vital for students to record their effort and to really see what they accomplished each day. Even what lessons they had at the small group table that add to their mastery of the subject and then they can identify if they're on the right track or what they need to do to get on that right track. Teachers should ask students to spend a couple of minutes reflecting on progress at least once a day. I'm a principal now, but for 10 years I was a second grade Springs teacher. I know that teaching the Springs way is doable, even for young kids. Students need to understand their goals and be part of the process of working on those goals. A big part of this is tracking their work in their progress folders. You can make it fun by having them color their progress in a chart or even tracking with old fashioned star stickers. Kids can track words per minute for reading fluency. All of these examples empower students and help them engage with the process. Even high school students get a kick out of coloring in tracking sheets and goal sheets. A student who is in charge of their educational journey, who is an active participant and leader in reaching their own goals, is a lifelong capable learner. And this contrasts with students who are good note takers. They're good at playing the teacher's game, the game of school, in order to get a passing grade, but they never really internalize or understand how they learn best or have the confidence to do their own learning. This model gives students ownership of their learning. 
Students are not just checking off boxes for compliance, but are having rich and authentic learning experiences based on the goals that they created. They can own their success. The most effective and long-lasting learning comes when a child is engaged in a productive struggle. A child who is actively working out the learning, not frustrated but trying to figure it out. That primarily happens during independent work. And time must be allotted for the productive struggle so that deeper learning can happen. I really believe in the process of conferencing with students because once I started doing it consistently with my own high school students, I found that these conferences allowed me to personalize and target feedback in a way that I hadn't been able to do before. Also, the relationships that you can build with your students when you're having that one-on-one -on -one conversation really lets them see how much you care about them and their progress. What prevents uh, this from happening in the classroom? I think, number one, the teachers haven't established working systems in the classroom. This takes time to establish, and often teachers fear that they are wasting time that should be spent on instruction. However, we know that spending time establishing and teaching routines is time well spent. Independent learning materials can't be used occasionally if we want a student-driven classroom. They need to be used routinely. Also, teachers need to share the workload with students. All resources and instructional materials in the classroom needs a system for use that is shared with students. I think a lot of teachers believe that conferencing is not possible or too difficult because it requires them to focus on just one student. And that means monitoring the rest of the classroom is challenging. And I understand how true that is, but it can be done. Um, setting clear expectations, systems, and routines from the get-go is essential. Also, I think that once students realize that they will have your undivided attention when it is their turn to conference, slowly they begin to become a little bit more respectful of that conferencing time. Uh, I would recommend keeping um, your conferencing blocks to no longer than about 30 minutes per class period so that students are not left to independent work for too long. If you have an ACE available, this is a great time to use them to monitor students. One thing I've done is to require students to submit what they worked on during their independent study time as an exit ticket for the day. When a student consistently chooses not to make good use of the time, sometimes a phone call home to let parents know has helped. One of the biggest barriers to the spring's way is when teachers are reluctant to give up the old ways of scheduling the classroom day. There's not enough time in the day to do it all. Time for student-driven learning must be carved out of the traditional teaching schedule. This makes many teachers nervous because how will they know if every child is learning every moment? For some teachers, there's a temptation to do a lot of direct instruction to make sure that everything has been covered. Who knows if the child actually learned it, but they were sitting there. So teachers need to get comfortable with letting some of that control go. Routines need to be taught and reinforced from day one. Teachers need to start with baby steps. In the beginning of the year, talk about your expectations have a run through where students are given a couple of activities to work on while you and your ACE walk the room. Model and reinforce correct behavior and redirect students who are off task. After students seem to be able to keep focus on their own, begin small groups with the ACE still walking the room to help students. Then finally, once everything is running smoothly, have the ACE pull their own group or work one-on-one -on -one with students. And the most important thing, make resources and supplies accessible to students. No student should have to come to you and interrupt a one-on-one -on -one group or a small group because they need supplies. Everything should be at their fingertips with routines in place for getting help. Some teachers are concerned that the Springs Way is an add-on to traditional teaching. It's one more thing. And yes, I agree that would be too much. Teachers need to stop doing all the things and start doing the right things. This is where the prepared classroom comes in. Once the independent work time systems are in place and the other materials are organized and displayed for student use, those systems are efficient 
And the teacher doesn't have to run around organizing daily lessons. It's actually a different way of thinking about lesson planning. I was a Springs teacher for 10 years before becoming a principal, and it took me a couple years to wrap my head around how to implement the Springs way into my classroom. But once I created and prepared an environment in my class, I was ready to stop doing the typical whole group dog and pony show and start personalizing instruction in small groups and student conferences. I reviewed my iReady data to group students by need, and I could even use the iReady to print lesson plans for small groups, which targeted teaching, and that totally saved a whole lot of time. My goal this year with All Systems Go is to ensure that teachers are focusing their energies on the things that really matter. I, I tried to organize my weekly schedule so there was time for independent work at least four days so I could have those personal interactions with each of my students. I scheduled, I scheduled these out and then stick to a strict time limit, usually no, the, no more than about seven minutes per meeting. I create a tuning checklist with two or three important topics to discuss, and it's really important to share that check, checklist with the students before the conference so that they can come prepared and confident. My high school students record the notes in a shared Google Doc for both of us to identify the next steps before they leave. So I'm looking to see that students are engaged. The classroom is prepared for students, not just for the teacher, and students can speak to me about their learning goals and what they do if they're having trouble. How do they know that they've mastered one of their goals? And this is evidence of like daily and frequent reflection on the mastery will process. There are many ways to learn things. I mean, I don't expect to see all of them in every single classroom, but I do expect a student-driven culture with choice and reflection for all students. Sometimes when I'm in a classroom, I'll ask kids, what's your goal? How did you decide on that goal? How do you know that you're learning? How do you get help when you're stuck? If their answer is always the teacher, the teacher helps me figure out my goals. The teacher tells me how well I'm doing. The teacher helps me when I'm stuck. Then that classroom has a way to go before it becomes a student-driven classroom. It's a continuum and we will all get there but I'm looking for student agency in their own learning in every classroom. Uh, this is definitely a challenge. Not all students will immediately embrace the flexible classroom and the student-driven freedom. In some, in some cases, hold that, hold that will be yeah. too overwhelming for that student, and they won't be able to be successful. In these cases, pared-down structure needs to be established. The student may need to be assigned a seat or select from two options instead of six, or even have no choice. It's important that we make these decisions on a case-by-case -case basis without assuming the worst to start. This is the essence of personalized learning. We give every student what they need to be successful. So we want the kids to be in charge and, and learn to be more in charge of themselves. For some students, the wins, they're just gonna be smaller. Definitely consistency and relationship are the key elements here. And Springs has so many different ways that we do that through our ACE support, through our special education support and our counselor support. And we've also had a lot of positive results in classes where students spent two years and sometimes even more with the same teacher. So all of this with Springs is due to that consistency and relationship building. There needs to be choice, but not too many in the beginning as kids are learning to work independently. There needs to be immediate accountability and feedback as quickly as possible. The work needs to be in the zone of proximal development, not too easy and not too hard. This can be a problem for older kids who are significantly below grade level. 
The good news is that Springs has lots of materials available for all teachers. I think the hardest part of starting with student-driven learning is creating the planned environment in which students are empowered to make choices because they have a lot of things available to them to work independently. And this independent work carves out the time for the teacher to do high quality one-on-one -on -one feedback and instruction. The prepared environment requires high quality materials to be created and curated. Once the classroom is set up with those materials, some parts of the day will just run themselves in an evergreen way. High quality independent materials are not usually quick start materials. Students need to be taught how to use them and they need to begin by practicing using them under the direction of a teacher, maybe at the small group table or whole group according to the material. We believe that we can expect more. Kids can be more reflective about their learning and take charge of more of their own learning if we set structures in place to do that. It's our mission's call, it's our promise to parents to empower their children and ignite their curiosity. The Springs Way takes a little more startup effort, but it's worth it because once a classroom is cooking along with all of these systems in place, kids bloom and it's a beautiful thing.